Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to do a bit of an experiment and mixed media piece. I am really excited about doing some new things with the way that I approach my artwork. It's really fun to, to spice things up a little bit, but what I want to do today is I want to incorporate some, some paper into this illustration. So I've seen where other artists have included washi tape, especially on clothing for, for characters in their illustration. I think it looks really cool. I love that added detail. And I don't have any washi tape that I wanted to incorporate into an illustration right now, but I do have some really beautiful handmade paper that have metallic details on them. So these are the three that I found in my collection that I thought would be a good fit for an illustration, but I've decided to go with this one. The light is hitting it really strong, so it looks really contrasted, but depending on the way the light hits it, it can become more subtle or less subtle. And I really like that it's kind of one color overall. So this is the one that I will be using. And I'm also going to be using it for her clothing. I think it's gonna have a really interesting effect. And I'm going to do watercolor for pretty much the rest of it. I decided actually to keep the line work pretty minimal. I went in with a pencil, so we're going to see how that kind of behaves, but it's, it's actually going to be a little bit lighter, I think, on the watercolor. I think I'll, I'll let it be a little bit more stylistic and expressive maybe so we'll see how it ends up but i'm i'm excited to play with this kind of a technique and the difference i will be doing the paper as the final step since the rest is watercolors and watercolors pretty much always get the paper to warp at least a certain amount and i don't want to perfectly measure out what shape i need and then cut it out and then it ends up warping so that it doesn't quite fit quite the way that i want so i'm going to do that very very last and that also means that that paper won't get damaged by the water while I'm working on it. But anyways, I am excited to jump right into some watercolors on this piece. So let's, let's get to it. Oh, also I forgot to mention this is hot press paper. So it's very smooth. We'll, we'll see how, how that plays in with, with adhering some paper to it. I've never actually done that before. So, but before we get started, I do actually have some really exciting news. It is officially the annual holiday sale over at my shop. And that means that everything is 25% off. That includes originals, prints, stickers, buttons. I'm actually all sold out of my books over there, but that also includes the piece that I'm working on right now today. This original will be at my shop and it'll be 25% off. And that is only from well, today, up until November 26th at midnight Mountain Standard Time, that is Monday. So Cyber Monday, basically. But but yeah, I do have a link right at the top of the description that'll take you over to my shop. You don't need a coupon code for that or anything. It just applies once you're at checkout. But, but let's go ahead and jump right in with this piece and the process. So as I was painting this, I was trying to match the border to her clothing to the fabric or the paper that I was going to use to represent the fabric of her clothing. But that was kind of a mistake. Definitely looking back on it, I should have focused more on the value and the way that it would contrast against it. But I was mixing it and I was just getting so caught up in wanting it to, to look color wise the same. So when later it comes time to actually looking at the cut out paper on top of the piece, I realized that one of the values were basically the exact same for the border and for the clothing, but the color was off. The color that I had mixed was a lot more of a warm red or a, a red tinted yellow rather than the, the base of the paper that I was using actually seems to be a little bit more on the greenish side of yellow, in fact. So, so the mixture was not a good match color wise and the value was just like dead on. So, so later I do have to end up changing that where I go back and I paint it a royal rich red color. I actually really like that. I, I love the change. So so it turned out as kind of a happy accident. I was not anticipating using any red in this painting, but once I did, I was really excited about the way that the red and the gold and the blue in the background all came together to create this really strong primary color painting without it feeling too on the nose. But I did feel like it was oh, kind of a shame because I actually really loved the color and the texture that I got into that, like the gold 
banding on her clothing, the, the gold part that I painted. But I'll just have to remember that specific formula on what paints I mixed and how I dropped in this other yellow color because I, I actually really did like that. I liked that it looked almost a little bit more like there might have been a really subtle pattern there, if that makes sense. Getting that, that subtle texture in the watercolors, I think, provided a little bit more interest to it. So, so I'll have to remember that for the future, even though in this particular instance, it did not end up working. I actually, honestly, I really loved how it looked with this really rich blue background and the yellow border on her clothing and then just the white where her clothing was. I I love pieces like that where certain areas are left unfinished and I was a little bit tempted, but, but I had already, I had set this piece aside as something to experiment with this paper. So I, I wanted to see it through, but uh, this, this is inspiring me maybe that my next experiment might be leaving a part of another painting as an unfinished area that's built into the design. I don't know. I, I do love that the process of working on a piece and as you're working on it, getting, new ideas of new things you want to try out. But, but this one was all about gluing down the paper and seeing how it would work with that. So the technique that I ended up using to get the pattern for the clothing that I needed out of the gold paper probably included an extra step than was necessary. But what I ended up doing is I just put the pane of glass that my watercolor piece of paper is actually taped down to. I just put that right on top of my light box and then I let that shine through onto a piece of white paper. And then I carefully traced around each shape that I needed. And then I took that paper and just stuck the gold paper right on top of it. I made sure that nothing got flipped around. That way the gold would be the right orientation on the final piece. So I just taped that down, those two pieces together. And then I scribbled on the back of the white paper that would put that imprint of of exactly where the pattern was in reverse onto the back of the gold piece. I just traced it so that I could see it a little bit better and then I cut it out with an X-Acto knife and that was basically it. I did line it up on onto the piece to see how things fit there and there was a couple pieces that were a little bit longer. I had misjudged the bottom of the paper so I just trimmed things down and cleaned some edges up. There were some parts that just weren't going to fit. I cut off a little bit more than I needed, but, but that really wasn't a problem because I knew once I glued that down, I could go back in with my paints and fill those in with whatever shape was closest. And the adhesive that I'm using today is matte medium. And that's the same thing that I use when I glue my watercolor paper down to wood boards when I want it to be thick and not buckle at all. So I figured if it was a good enough adhesive for that situation, then it would be pretty good for this pretty lightweight need. It also close closes, it dries completely clear, which is exactly perfect for this. I did want to be really careful when I was brushing the glue onto the back of each piece that I didn't put too much because when I'm using it in other applications, if a little bit oozes over the side, it's really not a big deal. But this, if too much oozes over, it just ends up on the painting. So I tried to be really careful about that while still making sure that each corner and edge had enough glue that it wasn't going to come up and and not be able to adhere down well enough. But I have to say I was actually pretty surprised at how seamless that part of this piece ended up going. I figured that that would be a lot more tricky than it was, especially lining it up on the piece itself. I actually I didn't have a lot of wiggle room once it was down, but I think it was enough to to finalize the movement. I think it would be a lot harder if maybe if the pieces were a lot bigger, but since they were smaller and I could very carefully hold all the edges and then lower it down and then get it just that little nudge into where I needed to be, it, it seemed to come together easily. But I think that different types of paper, different sizes, like I said, different intricacies of the shapes of paper could make this whole process a lot more difficult. I did notice that the one piece that that kind of was shaped like a V a little bit, that was the hardest one because I could make sure that one side of it was lined up carefully, but it was kind of going in blind for the other one. But but luckily it was actually pretty close. So so overall, I don't know. I, I was actually a little shocked by it. It was enjoyable. It was really fun. I loved just like carefully spreading the glue on the back of the paper and then gluing it down. 
But I uh, overall loved this. I think that in the future I'll use thinner paper since this one kind of has an edge to it since it's so thick. It's a really thick paper, but but I, I love the effect that it has with this piece. It's something that I'd like to experiment more with in the future. It opens up a lot of things that just make it really fun to be able to experiment and get a little bit more creative with with the tools that I'm using, the papers that I'm using. So this is a lot of fun. I really do suggest if you're if you like the idea of this that you try it out yourself. It it made me enjoy this whole process a little bit more than than I usually do. And don't forget that sale over at my shop that's 25% off, no coupon needed until Monday the 26th, midnight. I again have a link right down in the description and that'll take you over to my whole shop, which includes the listing for this original over there as well. So, so that's it for today, but I will be back next Wednesday with another video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you then.